Oh, I see. <clears throat> Salutations. If you are comfortable, I shall begin. Over the years, I've seen an awful lot, you know. Many words have soaked into my mortar. That's like when you have lived in the, the same place all your life, you think it's important to get all these things recorded. And now, I'm going to tell you about them. Yeah. I'm a true Cicestrian. Stone by stone, for a mile and a half, 1,800 years ago, I was born from the plan of the Roman Empire. In my life, I've been put up, pulled down, put up again, added to, shot at, walked on, painted, Graffitied and um, piddled on. Oh, stop that! Oh, how charming. <laughs> Some of the things I have seen and heard and endured, you wouldn't believe. Last New Year's Eve, there was a brassier hanging from the tree just opposite. <laughs> Don't know quite how it got there. Uh, my niece's husband managed to knock it down by throwing stones at it. That isn't the half of it. As I was saying, I grew up with the Romans. They wanted to protect this town from barbarian raids. <laughs> They had to fortify with my bastions. Back then, it was fine dining for the whole town. There's all that millions and millions of the, uh, I think they were, o yeah, oysters. I found it so fascinating that the shells were still intact after so, so long underground. It was a treat for the Romans. <laughs> Norvio Magus Reginorum was the name the Romans gave me. Eventually, they were forced out by the stresses and strains of the empire. I, uh, I got a few stresses and strains of my own. <laughs> the Romans moved on. The Roman centurion moves the walls behind our house. But this was no ordinary centurion. This has the legs, but no head. <laughs> Abandoned and alone, I was used as a cemetery for a while, which was lovely. We had a group of, um, of burials in the middle of Chichester. I found myself defending the town again. It was hard work in those days, let me tell you. We won that battle. Then, new masters. This time, the Normans. The wars as we see them now are um, certainly, there's very little of the original stone. They took my nice stone face away to build their houses, leaving me naked as you uh, now see me. <clears throat> as I always used to be amazed by the flint and that sort of how it, sort of each flint stone in the walls was completely different to the next one and like no two 
were the same, were the same like how the sun would reflect on them and the shininess of them. So it wasn't all bad. Then the Normans built a castle in sight to help me defend the town. In 1100, I watched the cathedral rise. You can see it from the sea, I hear. Another war, this time with France. And more improvements. Take cover! If the city had put up a really stout resistance during the Civil War, the Parliament would have ordered the wall to be slighted. That may well be true. To my relief, it was the last time I had to stand in the way of projectiles. Of course, at the East Gate, that was significant because that's where uh, Waller's troops got in. It feels nice to be able to retire, if I'm honest with you. From the bullets, I mean. Although, the bullets do come back to haunt me on occasion. <laughs> The builder was there and he'd actually taken down part of the wall. And as he took it down, a cannonball fell out and landed on his foot. <laughs> to my shame, I didn't always help the residents of Chichester. In 1665, my gates were shut to keep plague victims in. My finest hour. Thankfully, I became a thing of leisure. Um, I spent a lot of time look, um, looking at the walls and walking around the walls, taking photographs. Have done since I was very small. Um, they're very beautiful, very attractive, very old. Why? Thank you. <laughs> of course, we had people wandering along the walls and peering into our gardens and looking through the windows, which we'd, we'd never had before. Quaint little timber-framed houses built on me were demolished for the vistas, you know. A lot of people in Chichester don't realise that the city walls are actually there, mm. despite the fact that they surround the whole centre of the city. And I began to be forgot about. Uh, there was a tremendous explosion, which has ta had taken place just off East Street. I mean, Gala Day started, I think it was in 1950, the year I was born. Then that's when the ramparts of the walls were, where mm. it was a clock full of people watching this and the day ended with beating the retreat late at night so it was quite an event and it was all rather sad when it collapsed. Hmm, a bit like me really. But then I was renovated to the thing you see before you. Walls really I think um, are kind of a part of the fabric of the city. I remember when the wall um, collapsed in the Avenue de Chartres. If you walk all along there, you can look down into the gardens in Orchard Street. The city walls have been part of my life for as long as I can remember. I was uh, actually walked around the walls this morning to revive a few memories. They should be preserved. They need look to be looked after. Oh, I'm not being sort of spooky, but I have to see my auntie. She died in 1965. She had a large collie dog. I used to walk around the walls. I think my mind's eye, I see her. That is pretty spooky, I'm afraid. As you now know, I'm full of ghosts. And will be for years to come. <laughs> it almost feels like a, a living part of the city. Good night, all. See you around.